experience. But first, you'll have time to look at questions 1 to 11. So 1 is Alexander to client number 3, date of birth, for address, by policy, travel date, destination, airline, hotel details, baggage, payment method. So this is the question 1 to 11. Hello, Travel Smart Insurance. How may I help you? Oh, hello. I'm calling because I'm going on a holiday and I'd like to take out travel insurance. Oh, lucky you. Okay, are you an existing client with us? Yes, I am actually. I have a car insurance policy with you. All right then. Can you give me your full name, please? Sure. It's Alexandra Wilkinson. Is that Wilkinson with two L's? No, just one L. It's W I L. K-I-N-S-O-N -N. Okay, Miss Wilkinson. Oh, please, call me Alex. Miss Wilkinson is my mother. <laughs> okay, Alex. And what is your client number? It's 305... Oh, sorry, it's 304-58867. Thanks. Uh, what's your date of birth? It's 12th of November, 1978. Oh, you've just had a birthday. Yes, that's why I'm going on a holiday. It's a birthday present to myself. Well, oh, good for you. Okay, Alex, we do have your address on file. Can you confirm if it's still current? Yes, I'm at number 216 Lonsdale Street, Carlton. Oh, I'll need to update that address. Can you spell the street name for me? Yes, Lonsdale is L-O-N-S-D-A-L-E. Okay, and what policy type would you like, Alex? We have trip protection luggage protection, medical and comprehensive, which includes all of the ones I just mentioned. It's a bit more expensive, but I highly recommend it. I'll go with a comprehensive policy. I don't want to take any risks. Agreed. Wise choice. I'll just need some details about your trip now. Um, what are your travel dates? I depart on the 8th of January and return on the 8th of February. Oh no, the 7th. Sorry. Okay, and where are you travelling to? I'm going to Spain and Portugal. Well, lucky you. I was in Portugal last year. Beautiful country. Yes, I can't wait. What airline are you travelling with? Northwestern Airways. Oh, I haven't travelled with them before. Me neither. This is my first time, but they come highly recommended. And which hotel will you be staying at during your travels? Well, a lot of the time I will be staying in hostels and Airbnb, but I have booked the Hilton for three nights in each place. Nice. And what about your baggage? What do you mean? Are you taking hand luggage and check-in luggage? Oh yes, I'll have check-in luggage and carry-on. Okay, how would you like to pay for that? Check, credit card or cash? I'll pay with my credit card. Okay, well, now I have all the necessary details. I'll put your request for travel insurance through. You will receive an invoice in the mail and as soon as payment is processed, your insurance will be activated. Thank you. You're welcome, have a great trip. Now turn to section 2. You will hear a speaker describing the process of brewing coffee. First, you will have time to read questions 12 to 18. So, according to coffee, what is the coffee a matter of? So, then the first studies investigation, the mathematics of then the machine are sold in Europe and the drip system so what 15, 16 and 17 says and then in 18 this process made using high pressure of what then in 19 to 26 19 you there have the developed numerous techniques to prepare the popular beverage coffee all techniques are based on leaching via solid liquid extraction and each method aims to produce the best quality coffee possible. A subjective feat that, despite evaluations from professional coffee tasters, is often a matter of personal preference. Because so many chemical compounds comprise a single batch of coffee, determining precise correlations between the soluble's physical parameters and the beverage's quality is difficult. However, 
Understanding the mathematics of extraction can help identify the influence of various parameters on the final product. While past studies have investigated the mathematics of coffee extraction, researchers have previously paid little attention to the drip filter brewing system. Drip filter machines make up about 10 million of the over 18 million coffee machines sold yearly in Europe. But I'm getting a bit technical now. I'll explain to you the process of the drip system. Drip filter brewing involves pouring hot water over a loose bed of coarser coffee in a filter. The filter is housed in a funnel. Gravity pulls the water through the filter, extracting coffee solubles from the grains during the flow. The water flows through the bed, leaching soluble coffee components from the grains. Any undissolved solids in the fluid are filtered from the extract as the liquid leaves the filter and the brewed coffee is released through the funnel. By contrast, espresso coffee is made by forcing hot water under high pressure through a compacted bed of finely ground coffee. But we'll look at that in the next session. Now turn to section 3. You will hear a woman asking for more information about a museum studies course at a university. First, you have time to read questions 19 to 26. Uh, board of study 23 what course she must need for apply 25 is interested in herself who is studies 26 is application close on hello i'm here to ask a few questions about the masters of museum studies yes i'm the coordinator of the program can i ask why you are interested in this particular course of study well, I did a bachelor's in history with a minor in migration studies. I'm currently working at the Migration Museum and I'm interested in doing research to specialise in my field, particularly in the area of history of European migration to Australia. I see. I know the curator of the museum, Albert Hoffman, quite well. The university and the museum do quite a lot of projects together. Yes, it was actually Mr Hoffman who suggested I speak to you. I see. And how long have you been working at the museum? I've been working there for eight months. Actually, it's been nine months now. Since I work full time, I'd like to study part time. How long will it take to complete a master's part time? Well, the graduate diploma is six months with one year full time. But the master's program is one year. One semester of coursework and one semester of research. So if you do it part time, it will take you two years. Also, well, what modes of study are available? Well, we actually offer campus mode, online mode, or blended mode, which is part on campus and part online. Hmm. I won't be able to attend campus all the time, but I do want to be able to come to lectures and classes, so I guess blended mode would be best for me. Yes, it's more flexible, and some of the classes are offered at night to cater to students like you who work. So, how do I apply? Because this is a specialised program, you need to have a bachelor's degree, which you do as well as at least one year's work experience. Although research experience is highly looked upon as you will be completing a thesis, work experience is a prerequisite. Okay. Have you thought about what you'd like to focus on? I know you said you're interested in the history of European migration to Australia. Well, I'm particularly interested in heritage studies. I'm really interested in how migrant communities have maintained their heritage over the generations. Well, you will enjoy the subject called Migration, Community and Heritage in Semester 1. Sounds great. I suggest you get started on your application. Uh, applications are due by the end of October. Sorry, November. Do I need to submit references or recommendations? A recommendation letter from your employer would be beneficial, though not necessary. I'm sure Albert would be happy to write one for you. Yes, he is a very supportive boss and is really encouraging me to do further study. Well, all the best with the application. I look forward to seeing you at the start of the semester. Thank you for your time. Okay, now let's go for 2840. <coughs> <coughs> 
So 20 to 40, uh, there is a ground penetration radar, warming temperature, and computer analysis. So discovering previous unknown cities uh, center. More than ever, archaeologists have a staggering array of technological tools to employ, from remote sensing equipment that allows us to see beyond the visual bandwidth to computers so powerful that they can process in a second what it would take humans thousands of years to do. Archaeologists are calling the 21st century the new age of exploration. The opportunities for what we can discover in this century and the questions we'll finally be able to answer seem almost limitless. With that enthusiasm in mind, we may be able to look forward to, in this new century of discovery, discovering previously unknown cities or even civilizations in Central and South America. Archaeologists are using LIDAR, light detection and ranging, to literally see beneath dense jungle canopies. They are also using ground penetrating radar or GPR in places like Honduras and Belize to locate settlements that we weren't aware existed. Finding the tomb of Genghis Khan or Alexander the Great. Technology like ground penetrating radar, GPR, enables archaeologists to look underground without digging. Archaeologists have this technology to identify potential locations for the burial site of Genghis Khan. While we didn't locate the tomb of Genghis Khan at the time, it's a great way to survey large areas of land for what might be a relatively small feature. Ultimately, it's a numbers game. The more area you're able to survey, the more likely you are to find something. Why not the tomb of Genghis Khan or Alexander the Great? Entering the tomb of China's first emperor. Archaeologists know the location of the burial site of Qin Shi Huangdi, surrounded by his terracotta warriors in Xi'an. But the potential of damaging items preserved in the tomb for more than 2,000 years makes them reluctant to open it. Remote sensing tools like GPR can give us an idea of the interior structure and eventually we'll have tiny robotic devices that can enter the tomb and collect data with negligible disturbance. Deciphering the mystery language of the ancient Minoans. It's been more than a century since the powerful Minoan civilization of the Mediterranean was uncovered, but scholars are still unable to decipher their language known as Linear A. It's been more than a century since the powerful Minoan civilization of the Mediterranean was uncovered, but scholars are still unable to decipher their language known as Linear A. So far, we have more than 1,400 examples of Linear A to study. And now we have big data in our toolkit, which used with computer analysis will help us decipher this mysterious language. Understanding the purpose of the Nazca lines. Researchers are still theorizing on the purpose of the Nazca lines. Do these elaborate geoglyphs in Peru represent constellations? Are they associated with water sources? Anthropologists say that no single evaluation proves a theory about the Nazca lines. This is where using increasingly powerful computer analysis to crunch big sets of geographical and archaeological data would be really important. Recovering an intact Neanderthal. As global warming causes ice sheets and glaciers to retreat, it will be very, very likely that a well-preserved Neanderthal will one day emerge much like the 40,000-year-old baby mammoth found in Siberia. Confirming large-scale Viking presence in North America. Just as increasing temperatures will make glaciers reveal their secrets, the thawing coasts of Canada will expose a network of Viking settlements that will force us to rewrite the discovery of the Americas. We already have identified two Viking sites in the Americas, and once we better understand the nature of these settlements, I'll bet you will start recognizing them all along the Atlantic coast. It's not impossible to imagine. NASA also provides sophisticated high-tech tools that archaeologists are making use of. NASA's satellite imagery has been used to search for Mayan ruins in southern Mexico and Central America. They've also made use of ground-penetrating radar, which sends electromagnetic pulses underground and then spots signals reflected back by buried structures. The radar scans allow scientists to create images of what exists below. In northwestern New Mexico, 
archaeologists have used drone aircraft equipped with thermal imaging cameras to identify the walls and passages of a 1,000 year old sediment buried beneath the dirt. And Brexton University archaeologist Caitlin Bart and colleagues have used a robotic snake to probe man made caves excavated by ancient Egyptians. One of the advantages of these new tools is that touch free archaeology enables searchers to scrutinize large areas without disturbing them and accidentally destroying valuable material. Another potential advantage of high tech archaeology is that despite the cost of sophisticated equipment, it saves time and manpower. And some of the tools, such as software that stitches together data from various sources, usually can be downloaded for free. This is the end of the listening section of the test. You now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers onto your answer sheet. So, <clears throat> this is our uh, listening test. So, we have done all the questions almost. So, here all the all questions are correct. Here you can write a uh, credit card or card, whatever with the case. In answer sheet, it is written card, credit card also correct. Here, here supposed to be coffee extraction. So, I made this mistake. Be coffee extraction ex coffee extraction. Eighteen million is carried hot water funnel bread coffee. Here is B. Here is B. Here is B. Is B. Here is C. Here is C. A B. Heritage number recommendation letter. So I think we have completed all the question. So now we'll go to the answer sheet and we'll tally and we'll check it. So, thank you.